Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the Stanford Law School shouting incident involving Fifth Circuit Judge Kyle Duncan? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at a timeline of the incident, then move to my analysis. On March 9, 2023, the Stanford Federalist Society at Stanford Law School had an event planned, which was titled The Fifth Circuit in Conversation with the Supreme Court, COVID, Guns, and Twitter. Fifth Circuit Judge Kyle Duncan was a speaker at the event. Prior to the event, the society was asked to cancel it by liberal student organizations at the school but they refused and the event moved forward as planned. When Kyle Duncan tried to speak, about 60 student protesters shouted at him for about 20 to 30 minutes. They said things like, you are not welcome here, we hate you, we do not respect you, and you have no right to speak here, this is our jurisdiction. They called him a liar, among other names. Kyle Duncan called for the administrators of the school to bring order to the situation. Eventually, Tyrion Steinbeck, the Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, moved to the podium and delivered a bizarre, awkward, and poorly prepared speech. Here is a summary of her speech. Much of this is paraphrased. Tyrion started by saying that she was uncomfortable with the judge's presence. The event was tearing at the fabric of the community. She had to ask herself, quote, is the juice worth the squeeze, unquote. Kyle Duncan said this was a setup, Tyrion denied this. She went on to say that his opinions from the bench land as absolute disenfranchisement of the people at the law school. She claimed that his work had caused harm. Her role at the university was to create a space of belonging for all people. She claimed that many people in this administration absolutely believe in free speech. I find it curious that she didn't say all people. She thought that free speech was worth defending even in this time. Once again, she said, is the juice worth the squeeze? Kyle Duncan responded by saying, what does that mean? Tyrion said, I mean, is it worth the pain it causes and the division it causes? She went on to talk about how the free speech policy at the university might need to be reconsidered because the harm was so great. She hoped that Kyle could see through his hyperpolitical lens and see human beings. After denying the judge free speech for several minutes, Tyrion said she thought the students should give space to hear what Kyle Duncan had to say. During this rambling and incoherent speech by Tyrion, three other administrators were present, but they did nothing to stop the disruption. After the speech, there was a disorganized question and answer session where the student protesters were still interrupting. Two days after the incident, Stanford Law School apologized to Judge Kyle Duncan. They noted that what happened was inconsistent with their policies on free speech and they were very sorry about the experience he had while visiting the campus. The students were told that they could protest, but not disrupt proceedings. In addition, staff members should have enforced the policies of the university, but they failed. Dozens of students protested the law school dean, Jenny Martinez, because she apologized to Kyle Duncan for the incident. On March 22, 2023, she defended her decision to apologize to the judge and wrote at length about the importance of free speech in a 10-page memorandum sent to the law students. It seems odd that the students would not have learned about free speech in their law classes, but I guess that's not covered anymore. In an email to the leadership of the Federalist Society, again, this is the group that invited the judge, the acting associate dean of students listed Tyrion as a resource the students could go to to support their mental health. So the dean was recommending that the students go to the very person who interrupted Kyle Duncan and insulted him with a bizarre and rambling speech. This is like telling someone who wants to refine their public speaking skills to seek advice from Kamala Harris. Kyle Duncan called for Tyrion to be fired and the school to discipline the students who disrupted the event. He referred to the incident as a bizarre therapy session from hell. One could interpret this as comparing these protesting law students to demons but that seems a little extreme. There's no way that demons would have behaved that badly. At the time making this video, Tyrion is on leave from Stanford University and the students have not been disciplined. 
Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts in a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. As I mentioned, Tyrion Steinbach was the Associate Dean of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, otherwise known as DEI. Many people wonder what's involved with this job. As it turns out, when Tyrion was hired, Stanford attempted to explain her role. They said, quote, Steinbach will have broad responsibility for designing new programming and strategy, bringing an equity analysis to the institutional decision-making, and providing counseling to students. She will also serve as the primary liaison between students, faculty, and staff on issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the student experience, unquote. This really makes it sound like Stanford has no idea what the job involves, but they wouldn't be the only ones to be confused by this topic. Essentially, DEI programs are supposed to create an environment of equal representation and opportunity, focusing on groups that have historically faced discrimination. I think these programs have good intentions, but in reality, they end up creating environments hostile to conservatives. There is talk in some conservative states of eliminating these programs altogether. Some people argue that the programs really just create different kinds of inequality and discrimination. The incident at Stanford certainly supports this theory. Item number two, university employees like Tyrion may seem like allies to people who are liberal, but in reality, she is an enemy of liberal thought. She is misrepresenting liberal values and really attempting to define them in a way that's more extreme left than liberal. Her actions indicate a desire to eliminate free speech for those who she opposes, while maintaining it for people who share her ideology. Her argument basically comes down to the notion that some types of free speech are too harmful or painful. This is where she gets her catchphrase, is the juice worth the squeeze? The irony is that she could apply the same phrase to DEI programs. Item number three, what are the characteristics associated with the left-wing extremism evident in the students who are protesting at Stanford? Research on authoritarianism has shown that many people develop this trait prior to strong political feelings. Put another way, a person is authoritarian first, then they find a political ideology to support. Both left-wing and right-wing authoritarians have a predisposition for liking people with similar beliefs and opposing those who have different beliefs. Authoritarians on both the left and the right are fairly similar in many ways, but there are a few differences. For example, left-wing authoritarians tend to experience more intense emotions, and they're more likely to view the world as a dangerous place. This may explain the paranoid and antagonistic reaction of these law students. They're afraid of conservative ideas, but they don't have the critical thinking skills to debate. Therefore, they just create noise. Their behavior was similar to a childlike temper tantrum, typical of the cancel culture ideology. It's a shame that these students weren't part of some type of law school where they could learn how to argue. Item number four, there have been other incidents where liberal students have been disrespectful to conservative figures at universities, but the vast majority of liberal students respect free speech. What occurred at Stanford to make these particular students act in such an extreme and childlike way? I think what happened here is a failure of leadership. The students were emboldened by left-wing authoritarians who encouraged them to have feelings of paranoia and distrust. In addition, the administrators helped the students to develop a sense of entitlement, a condescending attitude, and become extremely arrogant. The administrators at Stanford decided it would be better to run a preschool instead of a law school. In this regard, they have been extremely successful. Item number five, some people have attempted to defend the protesting law students at Stanford. These efforts to mount a defense have actually underscored how ludicrous their behavior was. For example, some people have argued this new generation of law students is actually superior to old ones. They have decided to stand up against what's wrong. They are not going to tolerate anyone disagreeing with their point of view even if it means shutting down free speech. They will create noise in order to drown out dissenting points of view. This doesn't sound like a superior generation of law students. It sounds like kind of an insurrection, one based on temper tantrums, but no less dangerous in the long run. The world doesn't need a new generation of thought police. Now moving to my final thoughts. DEI programs have largely failed because they are based on bullying and immature behavior 
instead of empathy and compassion. What the world needs is more people who are willing to listen, to compromise, to accept diversity of thought, to treat people as equals, and to include varying viewpoints. The solution is found with a complete understanding of the terms diversity, equity, and inclusion. Those are my thoughts on the Stanford Law School shouting incident. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.